Hello, my name is Julie, and today I'm going to be giving you 21 autumn book recommendations. So it's not quite fall here yet in North Carolina, but the weather is finally cooling off so that it's bearable to be outside. So I thought I would get ahead of the curve and give you some fall book recommendations so you have time to go get them and read them this fall. I have book recommendations for just about every genre, so I should have something for just about every reader. We have some gothic stuff here, we have some witchy magic, we have dark academia going on, we have some ghosts. Lots of fun stuff that you should find something that you haven't read yet. First up, I'm going to go over some general fiction books. So the first one I have to recommend is one of my favorite classics of all time, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I first read this, I think I was a sophomore in college. I read it for fun, not for school. And I was absolutely blown away with this. This is about our main character, Jane Eyre, as we follow her through her childhood into her teenage and more adult years. She is a orphan. She is left with an extended family who doesn't love her, shoved off to a girls' school where they're treated poorly, and eventually is trying to make her own way by being a governess, which means that she's surrounded by rich people who don't quite see her at her level. But the man that she works for also has some sort of strange air about him. It is no wonder that this has stood the test of time. This book actually popularized the first person perspective in English fiction and the way that we see into Jane's mind as she is struggling constantly but she is staying to her morals the entire time is one of my favorite things I've ever read. I really connect to her as a character and it is extremely feminist considering the time that it was written in. This definitely has a gothic vibe to it. There are different elements that make it feel a little bit spookier. It was all the rage in the 1860s when this was written and I think that this is a perfect fall read. Next up, I have a very hard-hitting literary fiction, and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is a story told in two timelines. In the present timeline, the Me Too movement is beginning, and our main character, Vanessa, has been reached out to by a woman who is a journalist who has said that multiple people have come forward saying that a professor of hers when she was at boarding school in high school was taking advantage of multiple girls throughout his tenure at the school and is wanting to reach out to her for comment and Vanessa starts to spiral because in the past timeline we see her as a high schooler as her teacher slowly manipulates her into having a consensual relationship with him and that relationship continued throughout most of her adulthood. She is having a very hard time processing this and she has her whole life tried to treat this as a romantic situation and that she was in charge. Because if that isn't true, she doesn't know how to cope. This is one of the most heartbreaking books that I've ever read. It's obviously very harrowing. There's a lot of triggering subject matter in this. It is fantastically written and very well describes grooming of young girls. This is not an easy one, but it is a fantastic one. It's set throughout multiple school years, but I think the boarding school setting and the dreary tone of this give it a fall sort of feel. Next, I have a book I read just a couple of months ago that has been shelved in the fantasy section, but I think it should just be in general fiction. And that is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chokshi. This is a story filled with a love for fairy tales and storytelling. We follow this man called the bridegroom who has studied different fairy tales and he ran into this mysterious millionaire woman, Indigo, and they hit it off, immediately get married. She has just asked him to never ask her about her past. And when her aunt falls ill, they have to return to her family home. And he is starting to uncover stuff about her past. In the other timeline that we follow, we see her best friend Azure as she is growing up alongside Indigo, who's very privileged, as she is not. This is gothic to a T. It's taking the character tropes that classic gothic novels set up and twist them 
and puts them into this. It is so heavy on atmosphere and the writing. I think that's sort of Roshani Chokshi's strongest suit is her writing style. So if you get along with that, you're going to adore this. It's very flowery and poetic, but I didn't feel like it got in the way. I felt like it built what could be ordinary experiences into something that feels fantastical. This book doesn't have a lot of plot. It's mostly atmosphere and vibes. And I did predict the ending really, really early on, but I was glued to the page. I did not want to put this down and I just wanted to go through this as fast as possible. I have been debating where to put this next book, but I think I am going to put it in the general fiction category. I'll talk about why I'm really debating it. But that is one of my favorite books of last year and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a twist on Dracula. So our main character is Constanta, who is Dracula's first wife. She died in the siege of a town in like the 1400s and she was resurrected by Dracula and was his only companion for so many years. But then when he starts bringing other people into his circle, she starts to realize how poorly they are treated and by extension, how poorly she has been treated this whole time. And this is written in letters from Constanta to Dracula. It's signed, which the letters make sense because the original Dracula is written in letters, but it is very short and almost told in vignettes. And I think that that worked for me. This is something that you could read in like one or two sittings. It's got like the horror, gothic, and fantasy elements that come with vampires. But like other than that, it is general fiction or literary fiction about a woman realizing that she is in a toxic relationship and trying to stand up for the people who have been similarly treated by this man. I absolutely was sucked in by this. This is the first time in years that I have wanted to reread a book the second I finished it. Next up, we've got a couple of romance books. The first of them being You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. This is one of the first adult romance books that I ever read. I did not read romance at all and I decided to try this one and I loved it. So this is about a couple who have been together for like 10 years. They're finally engaged and our main character has realized that she kind of has fallen out of love with this guy. His family has money. Her family does not. And her mean future mother-in-law has basically said that if she cancels the wedding, that she is going to have to foot the bill. So there starts a prank war in which our main character is trying to get her fiance to call off the wedding. And this turns out to be a super sweet second chance romance of our main character finding the spark in her relationship again. This is set in a small town and there is a specific part of the book where they go to like a cabin in the woods and do some like outdoorsy stuff. So this definitely feels like fall to me. Then we have a book that I want to read a million of and that is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This is a cozy fantasy romance that's set in the modern world, but witches exist. There is this secret group of witches who they only meet up with each other once every couple months and they stay separated from each other because they don't want people to find out about witches existing. And our main character, Mika, is really struggling with how lonely her life has become because of this constraint. She started a YouTube channel in which she is playing a witch. She's like pretending to make spells, but the world doesn't know that the spells that she's doing are actually real. And a home that has kept three young witches has reached out to her to ask her to try to train these three young girls how to manage their powers. And this is one of the sweetest like found family books that I've ever read. This really nails the cozy fantasy vibe so well. It reminds me of the type of magic of books that I read when I was much younger, like in middle grade. There's also a man who is one of the caretakers of these girls who is very grumpy and doesn't seem to get along with her very well when she's a very bright personality and she's trying to win him over. I love 
just the flavor of the type of fantasy that we get to see in this book was really refreshing. I wasn't expecting to love this, but I absolutely did. So if you're looking for cozy witchy vibes, this is my number one recommendation. Then I've got some fantasy and sci-fi titles. The first that I'm gonna talk about is Middle Game by Sean and McGuire. And this is about twins, Roger and Dodger, who were created alchemically by this genius who wanted them to, as adults, to ascend to godhood. These two have been separated and put to opposite sides of the country. Roger is really good with words and Dodger is really good with numbers. And this is a story of them as adults finding each other again and learning more about the way in which they were created. And it does, it does have like a really weird kind of timeline going on. This is such a fun and twisty book where like you're not really sure what's going to be real to this sort of magic system. The way that it presents all of the information is really fun and I loved the relationship between Roger and Dodger as they are growing back together. There is a little bit of the dark academia vibes to this. That and the alchemical feeling of this definitely gives it fall vibes. Then we've got The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Now it's been a very long time since I read this book, but the number one impression that this book left on me is that this book feels like November. You wouldn't say it's gothic, but it has this atmosphere of fall, like late fall turning into winter that I really liked. And this is about our main character, Quoth. He used to be the greatest sorcerer and swordsman in the land, and then one day he went missing. He has been in hiding for years, but a writer tracks him down to this tavern that he now runs, and the writer asks him if he will tell him his story, and that it should only take a day. Everyone only takes a day to tell their story, and Quoth says, it will take three days. So this is a very classic like sword and sorcery type fantasy. This has like a magic school in it where our main character is trying to learn more about this magic, trying not to get kicked out of school. And meanwhile, there's other mysteries going on in the background. Lots of fun stuff happening. Then we've got a sci-fi title and that is Gideon the Ninth by Tasman Muir. This is one of the weirdest books I've ever read. And I think weird books do so well for fall. The tagline that I like to use for this is lesbian necromancer or murder mystery in space. Our main character Gideon is basically a paladin for the head of their house or like kingdom of these necromantic people who are under the emperor and the emperor has decided that all of the different houses are going to put forth a necromancer and their paladin and they're going to all go to this weird creepy haunted house. They are going to try to prove themselves to be the best so they can be working directly under the emperor. And so all of these different pairs of people from all these different planets have come together to try to figure out what their assignment even is. And then people start dropping like flies. This is one of the trippiest books I've ever read, but the necromancer vibe mixed with strange comedy is a really interesting tone that you won't get anywhere else. What's more fall than skeletons? Then we've got Sorrowland by River Solomon. I've heard other people describe it as gothic. I didn't think about it as gothic until now because it is sort of inspired by Toni Morrison's sort of southern gothic stories. But this is about our main character, Vern, who was raised in a cult for all of her life. And because she was so disobedient in the cult, she was married to the cult leader and impregnated at a very young age. And she decides to run away from everything she's known and escape. And she is raising her two twins in the woods, far away from any sort of society, specifically societal ideals of gender. She's starting to notice all of these changes to her body that seem really strange. While she's also reflecting on the time that she had in the cult, and also the best friend that she had that she has lost contact with. When Vern gets sick, she needs to return to society to try to heal her so her and her children don't die and she has to let down her guard. This is some of the best fiction I've ever read. It's got speculative, it's got fantasy, it's got horror, it's got general fiction, it's got a little bit of everything in it so it's really hard 
to put it into one genre. But I think this is a beautiful story of our main character finally finding herself and accepting herself, even when the world hasn't accepted her in the past. I love the metaphors behind the speculative elements. And River Solomon is writing some of the most original fiction out there. Then we've got Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetter. I'm mostly including this because this is a perfect combination of fantasy and thriller horror. This is a very original fantasy world in which we have these five gods that rule everything, time can be exchanged as a currency, it's queer norm, and also very special masks can be made to be imbued with the spirit of a dead person, and so their greatest talent can survive their death and teach other people. And a serial killer's mask has just been stolen from the palace. And we have a main character who is hunting down, trying to find the mask. We have a character who came into contact with the mask in the past. And we have the perspective of the previous serial killer. This book is so good. It is so twisty and fast paced. There are the three different perspectives that are going on that all have different feeling stories that combine into one whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. I feel like there is at least one plot line here for everybody. And I loved the vibe of this world. It's like a high urban fantasy, so like guns exist, but there's also creatures that are entirely unique to this world. Then we have Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Dechenkov, I believe their last name is. This is a Ukrainian translated fantasy book. This is about our main character, Sasha, who she is accosted on vacation by this man who is having her do all of these strange tasks. And when the summer is over, she is told that once she graduates high school, she is going to go to this university for special technologies that nobody has ever heard of or else something terrible will happen to her. So she gets put into this school and nobody knows what they are training for. They keep having all of these strange assignments that don't make any sense. They seem literally impossible, but somehow Sasha starts succeeding even though she doesn't understand what's going on. So this is a dark academia sort of magical school type setting, but the thing is instead of our main character being so driven in this dark academia setting and all of the characters being so wanting to succeed, they're forced into it. Sasha's like one of the only characters that we see who really gets into her studies because everybody is just so lost and also under so much pressure to perform because if they don't, something will happen to their families. They have like a gun to their head. If you still have nightmares about tests in school, like maybe don't read this one. So if you're looking for dark academia, but with a very strange fantasy twist, this could be one for you. Now we're gonna move into the thriller category, the thriller suspense category. So not quite horror. It's not really going to scare you, but they definitely have some suspense to them. First up, we have If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. This is one of the main books that people think of when they think of dark academia. This is about a cutthroat college of the arts where our main character is part of this elite group of Shakespearean actors. There were only five or so people in his graduating class and only some of them will be able to make it into the big leagues essentially. And all of them are so pretentious and obsessed with Shakespeare, constantly quoting it. We know from the beginning that our main character has been locked up for the murder of one of his classmates. This is so atmospheric. It is such a fantastic story. The suspense of getting to this moment where we know a murder is going to occur and trying to unravel what happened around it. But it is more suspense than thriller, where we are trying to figure out the pieces of where these characters fit and what these characters actually want. This is about a bunch of characters who are just obsessed with each other and you will also become obsessed with them. So there's a lot of fall vibes in the dark academia aspect of it, but also the Shakespeare plays that we cover and just like, you know, the 
reading by candlelight and desperately scribbling essays. It is such an atmospheric book and it'll definitely grab you by the throat. If you are a fan of Shakespeare, this is a must read. Next up, we got a slightly different take on Dark Academia, and that is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. It was my favorite book of the year in, I wanna say 2022. This is different in Dark Academia in that, yes, this is the rich characters going to a great school, but it's more about like being popular in the college experience and the darkness of that than like the actual academic aspect of it. But it definitely gives a lot of the same vibes of a lot of dark academia stories. But our main character didn't grow up with money and was on scholarship when she was at school. So she has a lot of an inferiority complex, but she ends up getting into this group of rich kids. And when our main character's roommate is murdered, the murdered girl's boyfriend goes to jail. And our main character does not believe that he did it. But she is going back to her college reunion and she is determined to be considered like the most successful, the like biggest glow up of any of them so that everybody feels jealous and wants to be with her. And all of these friends are brought together at this reunion by the murdered girl's brother who believes that one of them committed the murder. So this is a little bit of the murder mystery like interrogation type format where we sort of have the spotlight be turned on one character at a time trying to figure out who did the murder, but the themes of this. It also has such dark and fun characters to rip apart. There's so many people with so much privilege and just the way that we analyze our characters, particularly our main character, I loved. There's also a really great romance subplot. This also takes place in North Carolina. So that's some bonus points for it. This is also set in fall, like football homecoming season. And this just has great atmosphere and a plot that will keep you on your toes. Then we've got Plain Bad Heroines, which depending on who you ask, is this a thriller? Is it a horror? It's shelved in the general fiction of my library system, but I definitely feel like it toes the line of going into horror. But I think that people who don't like horror have something that they can get into here. So that's why I left it in sort of the suspense category. This book is chunky and there's also a ton of layers to it. Back in the early 1900s, there is this school for girls in which these two girls are obsessed with each other and also this very controversial writer at the time. And there's also these two teachers who are in love with each other who are kind of seeing the whole escapade of these two teenagers kind of tearing apart some stuff in the school and maybe getting into some scary stuff. Several people end up dying at the school until the school is shut down. Like a century later, a woman writes a book about the school and what happened and now a movie is being made of that book and is taking place at the actual school. We follow a little bit of the two teenage girls in the past, but mostly their teachers. In the modern timeline, we follow the actresses who are the leads in the movie, as well as the author of the book who is on set of the movie. As strange things start happening in preparation for the movie, do we want to continue making the movie? Is the set haunted? That sort of thing. This book is very gay and it's so great, but this is just a dark, like queer longing book. While all of these creepy things keep happening, a lot of them involve bees or wasps, if you need everything to be like super wrapped up neat with a bow, this probably isn't the book for you, but I thought it was totally worth the 600 pages or something. Now we're into our horror category and who would I be if I did not mention my favorite book? And that is Bunny by Mona Awad. This is one of the first like proper horror books I ever read and it is one of my favorites for a reason. This is about our main character, Samantha, who is in a very competitive MFA program for creative writing and she has been struggling to write anything. The four other people who are in her graduating class are this clique of really rich girls who call each other bunny and they are all obsessed with each other in really creepy and weird ways. And our main character has always like thought like they were really weird and didn't want to be a part of that. 
but when the bunnies invite her to their smut salon where they share the stories that they've written, she suddenly gets sucked into their world. This book is what I feel like on the inside. Like the way that Mona Awad writes is one of my favorite things. This is another book that feels like November. This is set in New England in late fall. And our main character is so disoriented, doesn't really know what's real and what's not. There are horror things happening around her that she doesn't really fully get and she is being taken away from herself and it's just one of the most cathartic reading experiences that I've ever had. It is a story about the creative process and also about loneliness in a way that I thought was super poignant. Mona Wad's writing style is really unique. It's not like one quote will really stand out to you but it'll be the effect of paragraphs where you slowly get into something very strange and awful and weird from something very innocent. And I love just everything about it. Next up, we've got Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Of course, Stephen King, King of Horror, but this is the one that I have read of his that feels the most fall. This is about a family that moves to rural Maine because the father is going to be working at the local university and the house that they're at is very close to a pet cemetery that the town has been using for generations to bury their pets. Strange things and strange deaths start happening and I think the the best part about this book is the dramatic irony of you as the reader knowing where this book is going to go and not wanting it to get there but you know it's going to and that's sort of where the horror and suspense builds and I thought that this did a really good job dealing with death and grief. And this is also inspired by Stephen King moving to a rural town in Maine to teach at a university for a while and also like the house like the setup of the house that they're at and like what the neighborhood looks like is very similar to what's in the book because that's what has inspired it. Then we've got a strange one. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I loved this book. And that is The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. This is sort of a fantasy horror book, but I think the horror aspects are more why you'd come to it rather than the fantasy because it isn't set on earth, but very much like other gothic stories. Our main character is a woman who is trying to find a way for herself and she thinks that the best way for her to be able to secure a life for herself is through marriage and she goes to this doctor in town, proposes a marriage of convenience, and he accepts. He makes her promise that she will never stay the night at his family home. But they end up getting stranded there on their wedding night and they have to stay there for a while and strange things start happening. I loved this book. I feel like there's a lot of elements that I shouldn't have liked about this, but the atmosphere and the way that the horror shaped our characters' journeys throughout this, I thought was fantastic. There is a little bit of medical gore, which I always find really hard to read, but the amount that was in it, I thought was okay. And I really loved our main character trying to investigate what the spooky happenings in this house is. And taking a very active role. Then we've got probably one of the most popular picks for a fall book recommendation and that is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. This is inspired by The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, which if you haven't read, it is an extremely short story that totally warranted being a full-length novel that he should have done and I'm so glad that T. Kingfisher decided to take it into their own hands, give it more life. This is a novella and there is a sequel to it that I have yet to read. But this is about a soldier from like a fictional country summoned by a friend from the past to help him because his sister is dying of some strange disease and he is like reaching out as like a last resort. So our main character comes and is observing this strange weird house and the weird relationship between the brother and sister and there's all these weird mushroomy growths everywhere and it's very strange what's going on. I thought that this explanation for what's going on in the fall of the House of Usher is fantastic. This is the perfect completion of that original story. If you're into like the fungal gross rot, that type of atmosphere for a creepy book, this is definitely one for you. Next to last, we have The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. This is a horror that is set after the Mexican War of Independence and sort of in its shadow as all of our main characters, like parents, 
have been somehow involved or affected by the war and our main character has been fairly poor her whole life and she ends up getting married off to this rich man who's away a lot of the times and our main character is at this hacienda and strange hauntings at the hacienda start occurring and she employs the help of a local priest to try to help her and the two of them form a connection. I didn't think I was into haunted houses and then I read this book. This did a great job with it. I really loved the sort of spin on the gothic novel. You know, we've got the creepy house, we've got a young woman being married to a powerful older man she doesn't know a whole lot about. But I really liked our main character taking charge. I really loved the atmosphere of this. I think that was probably the strongest suit. And this is just like a very classic setup of a gothic horror, but also having like a fresh setting and a little bit of a romance element going on. So I think this will please a lot of people. And the last book I have to talk about is one of my favorite books that I've read this year, and that is The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro. This is another horror novel, this time inspired by La Llorona or The Weeping Woman from Mexican folklore. Our main character is a modern woman who has essentially had her life sucked away from her slowly by a husband who doesn't understand her, doesn't see her as a human being, and only sees her as a person to create and take care of his progeny. She is at her wit's end. She feels like she's about to break when she starts seeing this strange weeping woman who is threatening to kill her and her children and our main character, Alejandra, takes this as a sign that she needs to get help and she needs to save her children. We also see flashes to ancestors of Alejandra as they have also been haunted by this same spirit. I thought that this was so well constructed. My favorite thing in horror is when horror reflects real life struggles and this is such a fantastic depiction of a lot of the pressure put on modern women. Women in, are expected to be everything for everyone else but not expected to be themselves and how depersonalizing that is. I really loved how our main character gets to heal throughout this book while also fighting off a freaking demon. It was great. Definitely an underrated one that I think more horror fans need to pick up. So those are all the fall book recommendations I have for you all. Let me know if you have any recommendations for me because I'd love to know, especially if you have something. I'm, I'm definitely picking up a good amount of horror -y books in the next coming months. In October, November, and December, my book club is going to be reading gothic fiction, so I'll have a ton of new recommendations for that. But if you have any sort of like cozy fall reads for me. I feel like I don't have enough of those on my radar and I love to find some. Leave that all down below. If you'd like to follow me anywhere, you can find me at the singular link in the description that has my Instagram, my Goodreads, my Etsy, the Discord for my book club, all the things I do on the internet. If you'd like to see more of my videos, subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.